question. If he wants to be dead, why can't he be dead? And I've known a lot of humans who would be better off. Is that your question? Well... and welcome back to Ape Nation, your number one source for all things Planet of the Apes on YouTube. My name is Josh, and today I am giving my review of the next episode of the 1974 TV series, Planet of the Apes, with episode six. If you like what I do here and want to show your support, be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. This is a series of reviews that is following every single episode of the TV show, all leading to a full series review later this year. And if you haven't seen my reviews of the last few episodes, you can check all of them out right here. For those who want to follow along with my reviews or just want to watch the entire show for yourself, I've put a link down in the description where you can watch the show completely free. And as always, for those who have not seen the show and don't want to be spoiled, I'll start with my general thoughts at the beginning before going a little bit deeper and more in depth with the episode, giving all of my detailed thoughts. So if you want to know my thoughts on the episode but don't want to be spoiled, you can watch the first part of the video, click off the video, go watch the episode, and then come back to hear the rest of what I have to say. So, with all of that down, let's get into Planet of the Apes, Episode 6, Tomorrow's Tide. When Verdon and Burke are captured in a fishing village employing human slave labor, they must prove their worth as fishermen or be sacrificed to the gods of the sea, i.e. sharks. Once again, superstition has to be battled as the astronauts try to teach the humans and apes of the future their ways. So just kicking things off with my general thoughts as usual, I think this is one of the better and more fun episodes of the series so far, and I wasn't really expecting that based off how things were going with last episode, but I actually really enjoyed this a surprising amount. Out. The story continues to take that formula of Verdon and Burke teaching apes and teaching the humans of this era the things that they did back in their time, how humans operated and how they functioned back in their time and how they did things. But they do it in a little bit of a different way than before. They continue to keep things fun and fresh. And another thing I loved about this episode, actually one of the things I loved most about this episode, is it has some of the best Galen moments of the series so far. Might actually have the best Galen moment of the series so far. I think they really do a great job at using Roddy McDowell's sense of humor and comedic timing. I think he's really good at it, and I think he shines at it in a lot of moments in this episode. One scene in particular I really, really enjoyed. And I'm loving that we're also getting more and more of the three main characters with Galen, Vernon, and Burke having more and more screen time together, and we get to see more and more of their chemistry, and also just seeing the three of them work together and having to be on screen together more. I think it's really enjoyable getting to see all that continue to progress and grow more and more. It's also one of the most technically impressive of episodes with some really tense direction in one specific scene that I was really kind of taken aback by. So I really enjoyed this episode a lot. It does have some silly ideas that I'm going to get into in just a minute, but overall, I think it's a lot of fun. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely not in the bottom half of my ranking of the episodes. I think it's probably like my number three favorite episode so far. I really enjoyed it. So with all that said, let's get a little bit deeper into the episode and talk about some of my more detailed thoughts. This is, I think, it actually might be the most fun episode to watch. Not saying it's the best, not saying it's the most well written, not saying it's the best story, not saying it's the most interesting, but it's just the most enjoyable to watch. I liked the tone a lot of this episode. I don't know why. I think something about the setting and the story and the humor all combined and the action, I think, all make for a really fun to watch episode of TV. Speaking of that setting, I like the beach setting in this episode. It's refreshing and it also made me realize that something I've really enjoyed about this show so far is the constantly changing locations. It's been really cool going from forests to villages to post-apocalyptic looking cities to a beach. I think every episode offers something new or at least somewhat something new in the form of its location and its setting. So I'm really enjoying that and I liked the beach setting here and I liked the way it was used in this story. But getting back to just the overall tone of the thing, I really enjoyed the way this episode felt. I enjoyed the way it flowed and getting into some of that humor I mentioned, Galen gets some really great moments here. I think he has one specific scene that I thought was hilarious. He has a great clapback to a character and I'm really enjoying Roddy McDowell's comedic timing in this series. I think we get to see more of it than we got to see in the movies, of course. Cornelius, as much 
because he did get a couple of funny moments. Caesar didn't get any really, but as Cornelius, he got a couple of funny moments, especially in Escape. And I think we're seeing Galen get to tap more into that sense of humor that Roddy McDowell has. So I've really been enjoying that, and I think it's at its height in this episode. I hope we get more of it because anytime Roddy McDowell gets to be funny, it really, really works for me. Another thing I mentioned is the technical achievements in this episode, specifically for a 1970s TV show. I was really impressed with the two big underwater scenes in the first half of the episode. The one in the towards the beginning with them going under and getting fish under the fire, and then of course the one where they go after the shark later on. I was really impressed with how that looked, how it was shot, the tension in the direction of that scene, also just the fire, the effect of it looked really good. I was very impressed with the technical side of it, but it's just a really well-directed sequence. I think the overall episode is pretty well-directed, but those two specific scenes really took me by surprise with just how tense it was, just how well-made it was, how well put together it was. So I was really impressed by that. Speaking of the underwater stuff, getting into the gods and the shark side of things, the whole idea of them thinking that sharks are the gods of the sea, it's a little silly. It's not all that much more silly than some of the other super kind of religious-esque allegories that they've made in the show and talking about the gods and all that kind of stuff with other episodes and other characters that are fearing them, but making it kind of more of a literal thing with the sharks here. It was a little silly, but it's also kind of funny, and it provides another fun obstacle for Verdon and Burke to overcome, both physically and in terms of story. So while I did think the concept was a little silly and maybe could have been something else, I don't know, but it worked for what they were doing, and it worked for bringing together an overall fun episode. There's also a character in this episode named Gato, who you kind of think is going to be a big deal at the beginning of the episode, and he's not really. He's used, but he's not really used that much, and I thought he could have been used in a much more interesting way. I liked the little, I don't even know if you'd call it an arc, but I liked the little character shift that they do with him towards the end. I mean, I do like some of what they do with him, but they don't do all that much with him. He's barely even a character in the entire episode, and I just thought they set him up for something that could have been a little more interesting, but it didn't really bother me that much. It was just something I noticed. And like I also mentioned up top, it, this episode continues that formula of Burke and Verdon teaching apes human tactics, and also the modern day humans human tactics, but in a different and fun way, they're continuing to find different ways of teaching the apes and teaching the humans of this time how to do things in a much more quick and more effective way when it comes to things like hunting, when it comes to things like just basic construction and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really enjoying that each episode is continuing that formula, but maybe changing things up just a little bit and making it a little more fresh and fun. And with this episode in particular, I was really actually surprised and happily surprised by the ending. The ending went in a fun direction. I was really uh, enjoying it. It was clever. It was funny. And it was a solid ending that took us to wherever the next episode's going to go with them escaping and tricking the apes. So I really enjoyed that. And also one other thing I mentioned up top that I wanted to get into is the amount of time that is spent with the trio in this episode is even more than the last one and even more than any episode before that. I really want to see that continue. I was hoping it would continue last week into this week and it did. So I'm really glad that it did. I want to see it continue even more. I want to see even more of Galen, Verdon and Burke continue to have screen time and get to see their chemistry grow because that scene towards the end, I was really enjoying them. I want more scenes like that. There's a couple of scenes in the first half of this episode too as well. So I really like seeing these three characters together. They have such a good dynamic. The chemistry is on fire. So my hope for the next few episodes of this show is that they lean even more into that. I don't know if they will, but that's my hope. The one other thing that I will say about this episode that I didn't necessarily, not dislike, but it kind of let me down a little bit. And this is something that I'm afraid of going forward in this show is that it was missing a bit of a real threat. You know, Urko isn't in this episode. And compared to some of the other episodes, I just didn't feel like there was much of a villainous presence throughout the entire thing. There's no real main threat throughout this entire show. Towards the beginning of the show, you think it's going to be Urko. And in a way, it kind of is, but it's not really feeling like he's the main threat. But him and Zeus together, you thought that was going to be the main threat throughout the show. And it just isn't feeling like that is. Maybe that'll change in the coming episodes, but it's just not really feeling like that's the case. So I'm a little underwhelmed in that regard. But Beyond that, and beyond the stuff with the sharks being a little silly, I have no real complaints with this episode. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It was actually a lot more enjoyable than I expected it to be going into it. So all in all, this is a really fun episode that I enjoyed very much. But I want to know what you guys think of this episode down in the comments below. Do you agree with my points? Do you think this is one of the better ones, or is this one of the lower tier ones for you? I want to know all your thoughts down below. I'll be back next week with my review of episode 7 of Planet of the Apes. But until then, thank you so much for checking out today's video here on Ape Nation. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you
you can stay up to date on all things apes. I'll catch you in the next one, so until then, goodbye.